You know, one of the questions that I get the most is how do I level up in AI and how do I know that I'm doing good or at least improving? There hasn't really been a comprehensive approach that is agnostic of models, that doesn't care if you're a Chad GPT user or a Copilot user or a Claude user. It just focuses on the principles and your level of understanding and helps you to scale it up. That's what I'm doing here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to tell roughly where you are in the overall LLM fluency scale. Spoiler alert, most people end up below five. This is a tough scale. Don't be afraid. Then I'm going to walk you through what it looks like to actually improve. Now, you're going to have a lot more to dig into here in the post. I have a comprehensive assessment prompt. I also have a prompt for building yourself a 90 day custom development plan for wherever you're at. So there's lots to dig into. But first, let's understand the levels and what they mean. And I'm not going to do all 10 because people just don't stick around for that. I'm going to give you some blocks, right? Like a one to a three, a three to a five, that kind of thing. And we're going to go pretty quick here. So number one, level one, basic beginner level. Most people are here. That's your default. If you are a chat GPT user, a copilot user, if you're the kind of person who uses these AI tools to rewrite emails, to adjust a document, you're probably in this one to three area. And I just want to emphasize again, this is not a bad or good thing. This is just helping you understand where you are so that you can figure out where you want to go and where your goals are. Not everyone has to be a 10, right? Like that's not the point. The point is to understand your level and what your goals are and make sure you are equipped to get there. And that's what I'm all about. Let's jump ahead to number three to five here. What does that look like? So three to five, you are starting to build a mental model for AI. And this is why this scale is so important, by the way. No one talks like this. Like people tend to give you specific skill sets and, and I can do that too. I'm going to talk about some of the specific skill sets you demonstrate. But you need an overarching perspective on the fluency and competency assessment that you're looking for at this level. And three to five is all about building mental models. You are starting to understand how LLMs actually work, what they do when they reason, what they do when they don't reason. You're starting to understand that LLMs don't truly know things, that they're not programmed. You're understanding what next token prediction looks like. You have the beginnings of a mental model of what AI can do. Now, one of the things that is more important these days than it used to be is understanding context retrieval. It used to be that if I gave you those like understand how LLMs work lessons, that would be enough. But now as AI has gotten more powerful, you actually do need to understand the ability to retrieve a larger piece of context and work with it. Because to be honest, these AIs can take book sized prompts now, right? Book sized context windows. And so you need to understand how that works a little bit and have a mental model for that too. I hasten to add, none of this means you can build an AI system. None of this means that you can build a context window like a RAG system or a memory system. If that's all above your head, you're still firmly at three to five if you have the mental model down. The last piece I want to call out from a mental model perspective is that this conceptual understanding of AI is going to naturally lead to you thinking backwards from outcomes. You're going to stop asking, what should I tell the AI? And at this stage, you're going to start asking, what is the output that I need? Because the mental models are going to inform your understanding of how it creates the outputs. And you're naturally going to start to say, OK, I get a sense of how the sausage is made. Right. And so this is the output I want. I can work back in my head. And this is how you start to get to what I would call intuitive prompt engineering. You're not reading from a book. You're not trying to copy a prompt necessarily. Maybe you do, maybe you don't sometimes. And even if you do, you know how to massage it and tailor it a little bit, or you can write it yourself, but you know how to get to the outcome you want. So many people are here. I would say what I just described with sort of the level one and two, where you're just basic users of Copilot or a basic user of ChatGPT, plus this level with understanding LLMs and how they work with mental models and kind of going from there. That's almost almost everybody, right? Like they, if you want to talk about 80, 20, 80% 80 are right there. Now, what goes on above those levels? I'm going to make this as accessible as possible. And I'm going to give you a sense of whether you need to go farther or not based on your goals. So from five to seven, you really are probably going to be working with AI on a professional basis very seriously. So if you get above five, if you get above this mental model session, there are some patterns that start to come through that you just don't see 
at a lower fluency level. And I'm going to name a few of them, but you're going to get the idea. The overall approach is system systematization. You are using systems thinking, moving from a five to a seven, and that applies to AI because you take it very seriously. So a person between a five and a seven is going to be thinking in auditable patterns with AI. They're going to be thinking in terms of usually do this, and they're going to move that over to this is the sequence I follow, I get a predictable result, I know how to get the predictable results, and I can start to systematize it in a way that others can do it too. You see that difference? It's not just an intuition at that point. It's actually a understanding of how the system works so that you can predict and move with it. Another example of systematic thinking is building for prompt yield. So prompt yield is like, what is your quality output per unit of prompting? So if you're prompting inefficiently, you might take 10 iterations to get one usable output. But if you're prompting efficiently, you might do one or two prompts and get 98% of the way there and move on. And that is part of why, by the way, I emphasize the kinds of prompts I emphasize in my posts. I think it's really important to value the tokens, value the time that we are taking with AI so that we can go on to other things. And it is much, much, much more efficient to just do the prompt correctly and just get the right answer. And someone who is building and thinking in systems is able to understand that and also able to move from a casual intuitive, I think this is the right prompt to get to this output to a systematic, this is the yield I get on this prompt. I think this prompt can be modified in these three ways and I'm gonna get a much more efficient output and then they make the change and they measure it and they see it. These kinds of people think in feedback loops, right? Like you're thinking in terms of my systems working to make me more effective at AI. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have tons of tools, but in my experience, most people at this stage will have a prompt library. They will have five to seven tools they're working with regularly in the AI space. They will have preferences for specific work tasks that are associated with those tools. And they will be seen by their teammates as a peer collaborator and peer leader who can help the team put in place systems that matter. So far, so good. You notice, by the way, these are not job specific. I am not giving you the fluency levels for engineers and then the fluency levels for, for PMs. Do you know why? It's because I have a strong conviction that AI is a generalist skill set and we are probably teaching it wrong if we dive too deep into verticals without that generalist conceptual foundation. And we really haven't had that. And that's what I'm setting out to do here. I think it's great if you understand how to build with Langsmith as a developer, but I don't think that's the only kind of AI learning and grounding you need. And I think that we're missing this piece here, this sort of general approach to skill sets and fluency. And I think having a common understanding here will be helpful. Let's jump to seven to nine. What does it look like? Really at this point, you've mastered systems thinking, you understand how LLMs work, you are a teacher and you are a trailblazer. And so you need to start thinking about who you can teach with your skill set and how your teaching drives your own learning. So I will say for me, teaching has been super helpful in driving clarity and revealing gaps in my own understanding that I have to relentlessly close. Most teachers will tell you, regardless of subject, that that's true. Try to be, if you're at this level, a documentarian. And what I mean by that is the more you document about what you're learning and what you're thinking and how you're growing, the more you're able to scale your influence and teach others. And it's not about growing influence. It's about being able to communicate really clearly things that are net new in the space that you can then understand how to teach others in a way that is accessible for their level. And so that might look for you like setting up the AI training curriculum at work. It might look for you like leading a group of developers through, for, through their first AI build. It might look for you kind of like what I do here, where you're on YouTube or you're on Substack and you're kind of like talking through what it means to grow and learn in AI. There are lots of ways to do this, but the systematic thinking doesn't go away. And so you're not just thinking in team systems or personal systems. You are often doing something that is public that many, many others can use. So you might be building a Claude projects that others can use. You might be building a little vibe prompted tool that others can use in order to understand their own level of fluency, similar to what I've done with the prompts in this, in this piece, actually. But your goal is to pull the impossible problems into the realm of the possible. That's what that innovation piece looks like. Someone who is teaching 
who is learning, who is growing, they should be helping to pull forward things that were previously deemed very difficult to do with AI because they are helping to discover AI capabilities. And by the way, that understanding that AI capabilities are not all documented and you can discover them and you can put them to new uses is a great example of what teaching and innovation and the relationship between systems thinking and deep understanding of LLMs is all about. People who understand LLMs deeply know that LLMs are not all discovered. We do not ship an AI and OpenAI knows all about it. We ship an AI and we all collectively discover the capabilities it has because it's more accurate to say these systems are grown than to say that they are programmed. And so we're all discovering together what grew. And that is part of the job at level seven to nine is to start to innovate and understand where to push farther on LLM capability and why it matters and then be able to turn around and teach that back and really grow the practice. So I don't give tens. There's not going to be a 10 here. I think one of the things that I want to call out is that you should understand that wherever you are, your competitive reality is shifting. We are in October of 2025. We are not too far away from the end of the year in 2026. You need to think of your baseline as shifting into the new year such that like the whole population is going to grow into one to three in the next year. And there will be a much larger part of the population growing into that sort of three to five area. And there will be many more people who are pushing themselves up the skill ladder from there. What I'm saying isn't here to sort of panic you. Your goal may not be to be a teacher or an instructor. Maybe your goal is to be a systems thinker. I don't know. Or maybe you're perfectly happy just understanding how LLMs work. But regardless, I want you to recognize that the skills required at each stage are sort of evolving as you go. My best advice, and I think I've said this other times, is think of it as a moving train and it's never going to go slower than it's going right now. So hop aboard and get yourself going as quick as you can in a way that you feel comfortable, that feels aligned with your goals. And so just as I said that three to five sort of people learning systems thinking and all of that uh, are are starting to develop mental models of AI, develop a mental model of your career path a little bit. Have a sense in your job family of what is the level of fluency that would be useful. And then here's the extra credit. I wanna give this to you because come back to 2026, you're gonna want this. Think about the corresponding skill sets that will emerge and map them onto this fluency chart. Let me give you an example of that. That can feel really abstract. Think about AI agents. We just had on October 6th, a launch of a new kind of agent framework from OpenAI. We'll think about what the fluency types map onto that, right? Like how do those map onto it? Well, systems thinkers are gonna think about how you build not just one agent, but multiple agents, how you sustain them within an org. Uh, innovators are gonna think about new things you can do with agents. People just understanding LLMs are gonna think about what is an intuitive way to get a task done that helps me to express my understanding of LLMs and get real work accomplished. And people who are just starting out are going to scratch their heads and say, this, this Asian thing looks really hard. But you can, you can map that whole technical launch onto this capability assessment. And you can do that with other launches that are coming forward too. And so this is not meant to be an October 2025 artifact and we're done. It is actually meant to be a living, breathing framework that helps you make sense of your own skill level relative to where we are with AI that you can come back to again and again. So there you go. That is my evergreen AI fluency assessment. As far as I know, we haven't really talked about stuff like this before, or certainly not in this way. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful. And I'd love to hear where you're at and most of all, where you want to get to. That's one of the things I was really excited about for this particular piece is I wanted to put together a sense of the the ladder, for lack of a better term, it's really not a ladder, but the sense of the jungle gem of AI and a sense of where people can go and then hear where all of you want to go and start to craft some prompts that help out and all of that. So yeah, drop a note. Tell me, tell me where you want to go.